Well, you said to be put it through. It's going to be some better than that. Very flexible. Turn with me, if you will, to James, chapter 1. In James, chapter 1, we're going to start in the 22nd verse of James, chapter 1. Frank, they must be taking on your, on your track and thinking they're expensive bit of cars and think we're all iron around here. <laughs> James, chapter 1, verse 22 says this. Do not merely, do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who looks at the word but does not do what it says, it's like a man who looks at his face in the mirror, and after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looked like. That man who intensely looks at the perfect law and gets freedom and continues to do so, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, and he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep tight rein of his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God the Father accepts as pure and faithful is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Father God, your words are power. Your words are important. And your words have the power. 
power and change our lives. Father God, let us these words now do these things. In the Lord, I pray. Amen. So as we are looking at this scripture, once more I'm reminded of the difference of what it is between becoming a Christian and what it is is being a Christian. Because again, becoming a Christian is so much easier than being a Christian. Because as you become a Christian, then God expects things from us. And I think one of the things that we need to talk about today that God expects from us is obedience. See, the scripture tells us that we need to look into the word of God and see what it says because it is what God expects from us. And it brings about Freedom. Now, it's kind of odd that rules bring about freedom. It's kind of odd that rules bring about freedom. But what we need to look at is we need to look at the Word of God because Timothy tells us that all Scripture is God's breath and is useful teaching, correcting, and breaking in all righteousness. So you see, we not just need to look at what we want to look at, but we need to look at everything that God has. And the reason we want to deep dive into the Word of God and obey the Word of God is because God wants the very best for you. God wants the very best for you. Now, rules made are rules God wants us to follow, not because He wants us not to have things or to be able to do things or be able to do what we want to do but because in what we want to do it causes us pain and God wants the best for us as a matter of fact anybody who has children and had to make rules about your children you should know this Mimi went with uh, Miles trick or treating and I don't know why she went trick or treating I'll let me get a bunch of candy that she's probably never going to eat anyway. But on the way home, she was sitting there digging through it. She goes, hey, can I have this? Hey, can I have this? Hey, it was like 8 o'clock. I'm like, no, you can't have that. And why not? Because you need to go home and go to bed. You, you eat a bunch of sugar, you're going to be wired up, and then you ain't going to go to bed till midnight. No. But see, we want certain things that are not necessarily the best things for us. And God wants to give us rules. He wants to give us laws. He wants to give us things in our lives, guidelines to protect us and to make us safe and give us the best opportunities we can in life. But Satan tries to lie to us. He tries to tell us that what God is trying to do is God is trying to keep us from giving us these good things that we really want in our life. See, the guy's trying to find something that, that we don't want, and he, he doesn't want us to have that, and he's trying to cut us out. You know, I got to thank him when I was doing this sermon. But one of the things that I thank God for the least is the no's in my prayer life. And the no's in my prayer life. You know, I, I can't help but think of how many times I prayed for something and the answer to that prayer was no. And then years later, I see God's wisdom in telling me no. Because it would just brought trouble or hardship or problems for me. Do you imagine how terrible it would be if everything you got or wanted you got, how much our life would be a wreck? Because we don't see what causes us problems in the future. You know, when I was a kid, I always wanted a, a bet. I wanted a bet. My mom, she got one once. I should have that. <laughs> but you know, if you can't drive a shove that safe, you sure don't need a Corvette, right? 
See, God knows what he has in store for our lives, and he knows what's best for our lives. And he knows what is good. God wants the best for us. And that's why he laid out rules and regulations for why we follow him. But how do we do it? How do we follow God's rules? Especially when they don't make sense to us. Especially when we really want something really bad. And the answer seems to be no all the time. Let me just ask you. Where's your faith in God? Where's your faith standing with God? Is your faith in God enough for the news? Do you trust God's wisdom? Do you trust God's ability to see all things? And can you trust God with the news in your life? Can you trust God to guide you through his word. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us what faith is. I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. See, faith is one of those things that we must have in order to be able to obediently follow Christ. Thank God. Because if you don't have faith in God, then it's really hard for you to follow him. You know, I see a lot of you, and everybody, faith is actually, the terminology of faith is actually mean to lean back or to lean against or to recline in. And as I'm looking out through here, I see everybody has faith in these seats. As a matter of fact, I don't see anybody half sitting. You know, just, just sitting there just in case it starts to fall, you know, kind of lean on the edge of the seat just in case it falls. We place our faith in chairs. But do we put our faith in Christ? Do we put our faith in Him? Or do we, some of us do like our faith, like some of us drink our tea half lemonade, half sugar, or half tea. How many of y'all ever do that with God? Honor for some reason. Christine, on occasion, she'll have to get her some tea from Panera, and she'll want to get a little bit of lemonade and a little bit of tea in that. Me, I call that wrong. But anyway. <clears throat> but that's what we do, because what we do as a Christian is to say, yes, absolutely, we trust God. Absolutely, we want to follow God. Absolutely, whatever God wants in our lives, we follow. But then we've got the realistic side of things, right? The side of our part of our now my brain's gonna go, well, hold on here. What about the reality of this world? And we try to mix our faith with the world, and we try to say, okay, God, I trust you, but I'm gonna trust you and I'm gonna help you with my trust. The word calls that double mindedness. And it's one of the reasons that we have so little. See, one of the reasons why we can place our faith and our trust in the God's word is because of why he gave it to us. He gave us his word for a very specific reason. <clears throat> because he loves us. Because he loves us. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter 5 Verse 6 says this. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for our God. <laughs> Very rarely will someone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his love for us in this way. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let me just explain this to you. See, why we can trust God is because of the love that he has for us. The reason we can obey God's command, even though we don't understand, even though we know it is what we want, even though we want something else, we know that God's love is more 
according to then what we want. And we know that God's laws are built for us because he loves us. I want Christine to be married to me because she loves me. I don't want her to go and do all the things she does for me because she's afraid of me. Because she's even paid some money to do it. I don't want her to be my wife and be married to me because of the love we have for each other. God wants the same thing for us. He wants us to love Him and interact with Him and fellowship with Him and obey His laws. Why? Because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt what He wants is the best thing for us. Now, brothers and sisters, let me tell you right now, even if all that is true, we are still a mess up. We are still going to fall short. There are going to be times, no matter how much you love, no matter how much you desire, no matter how much you want to be the person God's going to you're going to mess up. <coughs> and you're going to fail. And you're going to fall. And you're going to make a mess of We have a Savior. See, the question really is how much does God love you? You remember when you were a child and you'd ask me, look at how much do you how much do you love me? And your little kid would stretch out their arms and say, This far. Stretch out this as wide as they could. See, Christ answered that same question. But he said, how much do you love me? And he said, this far. And he let himself be stretched out on the cross and nailed to a tree and died a painful death. That's the kind of love that our Savior has for us. That's the kind of love that he offers to everyone. Because he loves us. And we know that no matter what, he will be there for us. And when we fail, and when we fall, and when we are disobedient, whether purposeful or accidental, it doesn't matter because he loved us and died on that tree. He bore our sins, our iniquities, our mess ups. God loves us. Even in the midst of our sin, even in the midst of our rebellion, even in the midst of all our activities, He loves us. And no matter what you've done, no matter what you have done, God loves you. A story was told about a young girl who got uh, who got lured into the big city, and as she got lured into the big city, she she had these dreams of her and her boyfriend uh, running away, and, and he was going to become an engineer, and she was going to become uh, a teacher. But neither one of them had any education, and, and after about uh, two weeks, the boy came back home. And the mom started looking for the daughter. And she couldn't find her daughter anywhere. And she looked, and she looked, and she looked. And, and people, after month after month after month, she kept looking. And she finally got this idea. She took this little picture of her daughter that she had, and she photocopied it. And at the bottom of the photocopy, she said these words. I don't know what you've done. I don't care what you've done. All I want you to know is that I love you. Come on. Now, her daughter had slipped into prostitution. Because in this big city, with no education and no way to live, that was all she could find to keep herself from starving. 
And as she walked home one night back to her dirty, rotten hotel, something caught her eye. It was that picture of herself and her mom and her at the bottom. I don't care what you've done. She didn't even pack her stuff. She got a bus ticket and went back home. Ran into her mother's eye. And wept. Listen. We're going to fail. We're going to choke. We're going to look at this perfect wall that God has set up for us, knowing that we are going to fail miserably. Who doesn't care where you have been? All he wants is you to come home. And he is. And he loves you that much. Yes, we need to be obedient to Christ. But that obedience is made so much easier when we see the love that he has for us. And that love starts with us accepting a free gift. His salvation. If you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come forward today. If you're looking for a church home and God has called this to be a place, come forward today. Listen, if you got something on your heart that you just need to pray with somebody for, come forward today. We're not here to judge you. We're just messed up as you are. What we're going to do is we're going to love you where you're at and help you give what God wants.